Hello all, welcome to Tech with Sass. In this video, we will talk about anti-corruption layer pattern. This pattern is really helpful when we are migrating any legacy systems or applications to modern applications gradually. So, because like uh, if we are doing this migration gradually, so both legacy and new application must coexist at same time. So, how do we ensure that the new application is not corrupted by the previous old obsolete APIs and protocols and also functionality is achieved, whatever is required for business when we are running both applications together. So, let us understand how can this pattern help us maintaining uh, this relationship between old and new systems. So, in our uh, previous uh, video, we talked about the strangler pattern. So, this pattern is really helpful when we have a big monolithic application and we want to convert it to basically a microservices based application gradually. So, what happens that you have seen and the amount of application, uh, we decompose it in a small, smaller web services. Maybe uh, the new functionality is not, uh, will not go to the, the old application, but we create separate, separate microservices. Then uh, over the time, the, the monolith application uh, size decreases. And after some time, we get the fully functional microservices based system or application. So in this, we see a journey happening. Uh, from old system to a new system. But during uh, this journey, there are some uh, tangent states when both legacy and modern application coexist. And they also need to talk to each other maybe uh, for some API calls or some other uh, calls, right? So how do we maintain that the modern application and legacy application uh, talk to each other but the, the legacy application does not corrupt the new application because if we use the old methods or old uh, APIs, then, then there's no point of migrating to new application. So let's understand the various challenges when we, ha when, when we are in, in, the, in the journey uh, to migrate uh, from the legacy to modern application. So uh, first issue is that whenever uh, we are migrating uh, from legacy to the modern application, it might need to access uh, some system APIs to operate because uh, both applications together are trying to fulfill the business. So they must uh, communicate with each other. Second issue is that like uh, similarly, modern application might need uh, some data or some uh, access right uh, to, the, uh, to the legacy application for some functionalities. Third issue is that like uh, both need to interoperate uh, because legacy app or new app uh, both need to uh, maybe talk with the talk to each other with the legacy or like obsolete protocols or obsolete API. So if you do the changes uh, for this in your modern application, then it will corrupt your modern application, right? So if you are going to directly support your legacy application uh, from your modern applications, then uh, the, the whatever the things from, from where we are going away, right? Like those obsolete libraries or obsolete uh, patterns or maybe uh, some obsolete APIs that are going to be part of your modern application. So how do we ensure that uh, we are not corrupting our new application, right? So for that solution is the anti-corruption layer. In this, uh, we use anti-corruption layer between legacy and modern system. So whenever these system need to talk to each other, they don't talk uh, directly, but they will communicate with anti-corruption layer. So whatever conversion is required uh, between like while talking to each other because uh, both system may be using different technology or different way of uh, communication. So all the conversion logic and everything uh, should be in as a part of the anti-corruption layer. So, so that both systems are isolated, but at same time, uh, they can work together. So this is how we can make sure that our, our uh, new system is not impacted or does not inherit the weaknesses of old system. So all logic uh, will be part of the anti-corruption layer, which is required for the uh, conversion. 
and then uh, whatever this uh, anti-corruption layer you can uh, code as a, a separate system also and also that can be part of the your application so this i mean this how um, and this is up to you how you going to manage uh, like uh, this anti-corruption layer now let's see the various important points to be remembered in case you want to uh, follow or adopt the anti-corruption layer pattern so uh, first point is that because uh, you are adding an extra layer between uh, two systems so it might add some latency uh, to the performance so you have to consider this fact as well and and think that whether adding this extra layer is going to impact your performance or your SLAs. Second point is that uh, how you want to manage your anti-corruption layer. You want to create an additional service or additional application. Maybe you want to uh, basically merge uh, this anti-corruption layer as part of your existing application. So you have to uh, consider this as well before you move forward with this uh, pattern. Then a uh, third uh, point is that because uh, it, it might be the case that you are uh, going to uh, migrate a very big application. So one anti-corruption layer might not suffice. So you have to understand and think and decompose uh, your application such that you might need multiple anti-corruption layers, right? So that uh, thing also need to be considered before you want to adopt uh, this pattern. Now, the main issue is scalability because uh, we might uh, often see that there is a sudden surge of requests coming uh, from clients. So how you are going to scale up your anti-corruption layer is an important uh, factor uh, while considering uh, to adopt this pattern, right? Then uh, also whenever uh, you want to this pattern, we have to make sure that uh, transactions and data remains are consistent and we can also monitor that. So uh, suppose uh, any issues coming from anti-corruption layer, how we are going to monitor them and how we are going to remediate if any issue arises. So uh, also like uh, whenever uh, you have like uh, anti-corruption layer and how you are going to like uh, handle the all communication. Suppose you have applications which accept only XML or JSON or they accept the, this HTTP responses, right? So uh, you have to consider that uh, the what are the various uh, protocols for communication you have to uh, adapt into the various anti-corruption layers while you want to uh, adopt this pattern into your application. So these are the uh, few points. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much uh, for watching. See you next time. Please leave comments or questions. Please subscribe. Thank you.